Welcome to FAA's Aircraft Certification Service. Production and Airworthiness Briefing on the Reorganization of FAA Order 8130.21, which provides guidance for completing the Authorized Release Certificate, FAA Form 8130-3, Airworthiness Approval Tag. This reorganization is part of a broader effort to streamline documentation, clarify responsibilities, and align supporting policies across related FAA orders and advisory circulars. Whether you're involved in manufacturing, airworthiness certification, or regulatory compliance, these updates are designed to make guidance more intuitive and easier to apply. Let's begin by exploring what's changed, why it matters, and how it affects your day-to-day -day operations. The purpose of the Aircraft Certification Service Production and Airworthiness Outreach Program is to disseminate consistent information to applicable personnel. Outreach briefings are not designed, nor are they intended to substitute formal, informal, or on-the-job training. Training requests are coordinated through your manager and submitted to the appropriate Workforce Development Service. The references used in the presentation are FAA Order 8130.21, Completion of FAA Form 8130-3 under Part 21, FAA Order 8120.18, Production Approval Holders PH, who rebuild or alter their own products or articles under 14 CFR 43.3J, FAA Order 8120.22, Production Approval Procedures, Advisory Circular 21-32, Control of Prepositioned, Products and Articles Shipped Prior to Design Approval, an advisory circular 43-9, maintenance records, and FAA form 8130-3, return to service. Always check the dynamic regulatory system for current directives and air policy memos. Air uses policy memorandums and policy statements to clarify or to provide guidance. Policy memorandums are internal documents from air management to users of directives. They provide clarification or guidance for directives to FAA employees and designees. A policy statement contains guidance on a statute, regulation, directive, policy, or technical issue. They disseminate guidance to FAA employees and to the public. Policy memorandums and statements are located in the FAA Dynamic Regulatory System. In this briefing, we will cover the purpose of reorganizing FAA Order 8130.21 the background, changes to FAA Order 8130.21, 8120.18, and 8120.22. In addition, we will also address the changes to Advisory Circulars 21-32 and 43-9. This structure will help you understand not just what changed, but why it changed and how it affects your work. The reorganization of FAA Order 8130.21 was motivated by four main objectives. First, to refocus the order on its core purpose, guiding the completion of the Authorized Release Certificate, FAA, Form 8130-3, the Airworthiness Approval Tag. Second, to improve clarity by restructuring and rewriting the document with simpler language to enhance usability for all users. Third, to ensure compliance by aligning the order with current regulatory requirements and airworthiness standards. Lastly, to increase efficiency through updated procedures that promote the accurate and prompt issuance of FAA Form 8130-3. Overall, these changes aim to make the order more focused, user-friendly, and effective in supporting certification processes. The reorganization of FAA Order 8130.21 is a component of the Broader Air Transformation Initiative, a comprehensive effort to enhance system efficiencies while staying responsive to stakeholders. As aviation becomes increasingly global, the FAA acknowledges the need for flexible, adaptable policies that can meet the challenges of a dynamic international landscape. This transformation is centered around several key objectives. Removing requirements that have no regulatory basis. Simplifying instructions and eliminating redundancies. Facilitating policy use by reducing unnecessary complexity promoting harmonization of processes with other civil aviation authorities. These principles guided the restructuring of FAA Order 8130.21 and its supporting documents, ensuring the guidance remains relevant, efficient, and aligned with global standards. The main objective of revising FAA Order 8130.21 
was to simplify the guidance for issuing the Authorized Release Certificate, FAA, Form 8130-3, Airworthiness Approval Tag. The updated order reaffirms its primary purpose, providing clear instructions for completing the form by removing redundant content that was unrelated to this task. It also eliminates unnecessary administrative steps that added complexity without improving compliance or efficiency. The result is a much more streamlined document that reduced the order's length from 74 pages to just 18 and functions as a clear, easy-to-understand directive that is easier to implement. Let's review the key updates to FAA Order 8130.21 aimed at streamlining procedures and clarifying responsibilities under Part 21. The order has been renamed to the completion of FAA Form 8130-3 under Part 21 to better reflect its purpose. This change helps eliminate confusion and aligns the title with its actual function. The block-by-block -block instructions for airworthiness approval and export have been merged. This simplifies the documentation process and promotes consistency when completing Form 8130-3 across different purposes. Guidance on pre-positioning prototype aircraft engines, propellers, and articles have been relocated to FAA Order 8120.22, which addresses production approval procedures. This adjustment ensures the policy resides in a more relevant and practical context for manufacturers. The enhanced policy on pre-positioning is now reflected in Advisory Circular 21-32. The revised Advisory Circular offers clearer control measures for managing products shipped prior to design approval, supporting traceability and compliance throughout production. Collectively, these revisions demonstrate the FAA's continued commitment to improving clarity, reducing redundancy, and aligning guidance with real-world practices. Continuing with the updates to FAA Order 8130.21, several key changes impact the return to service policies and related documentation practices. The return to service policy for production approval holders has been transferred to FAA Order 8120.18, which specifically addresses production approval holders performing rebuilds or alterations under 14 CFR 43.3J. This relocation places the guidance within a more targeted and appropriate regulatory framework. The general return to service guidance for aircraft engines, propellers and articles is now located in Advisory Circular 43-9. This advisory circular provides updated maintenance procedures and clarifies the correct use of FAA Form 8130-3 for documenting return to service actions, supporting greater clarity and uniformity for maintenance providers. All form example figures have been removed from the order. This update eliminates outdated visuals and encourages reliance on the most current official documentation. Much of the prescriptive language previously found in Block 12 has been removed. This section was often a source of confusion. Its simplification allows for clearer, context-specific entries and reduces the potential for misinterpretation. Overall, these revisions continue the FAA's broader initiative to streamline guidance, eliminate ambiguity, and ensure policy reflects practical, real-world use. As we continue reviewing the updates to FAA Order 8130.21, we would like to highlight two key changes designed to reduce redundancy and enhance clarity. First, the FAA has incorporated instructions for completing Part 2 of FAA. Form 8130-1 Application for Export Airworthiness Approval of Aircraft Engines, Propellers and Articles, into Order 8130.21. Previously, these instructions were found in Order 8130.2. By consolidating them, the FAA eliminates duplication and makes it easier for users to access all relevant export guidance in one place. Second, the language used in the block-by-block -block instructions has been refined. While this might seem like a small change, it's a significant improvement for those who frequently complete these forms. Clearer language reduces errors, minimizes back and forth, and ensures more consistent documentation overall. Together, these updates reflect the FAA's ongoing commitment to making its guidance more accessible, user-friendly, and aligned with industry needs. Now let's turn to FAA Order 8120.22, which also received a key update as part of this policy realignment. The policy on pre-positioning prototype aircraft engines, 
propellers and articles has been officially transferred from FAA Order 8130.21 to FAA Order 8120.22. This move places the guidance squarely within the framework of production approval procedures where it more appropriately belongs. But this wasn't just a relocation. The policy itself has been enhanced to provide clearer expectations and stronger controls around how pre-positioned items are handled prior to design approval. This change supports better oversight, aligns with current production practices, and helps ensure that prototype aircraft engines, propellers, and articles are managed in a way that maintains compliance and traceability throughout the approval process. It's another example of the FAA refining its guidance to match the realities of modern manufacturing and certification workflows. Now let's shift focus to FAA Order 8120.18, which has undergone several important updates to better support production approval holders, especially those involved in rebuilding or altering their own products. First, the return to service policy for production approval holders has been transferred from FAA Order 8130.21 into 8120.18. This move consolidates relevant guidance and ensures that production approval holders have direct access to the procedures that apply specifically to them. In addition, the instructions for completing FAA Form 8130-3, when production approval holders rebuild or alter aircraft engines, propellers, or articles, have also been relocated from FAA Order 8130.21. This change makes FAA Order 8120.18 a more comprehensive resource for production approval holders performing work under 14 CFR 43.3J. To support consistency, the text in FAA Order 8120.18 has been aligned with FAA Order 8130.21. This harmonization helps eliminate discrepancies and ensures that both orders speak the same language when it comes to form completion and return to service documentation. As a result, FAA Order 8120.18 is now mostly self-contained. It provides production approval holders with a clear, centralized reference for return to service procedures, while FAA Order 8130.21 is now referenced primarily for general information. This restructuring reflects the FAA's broader goal to simplify regulatory navigation and make compliance more intuitive for industry stakeholders. Let's now look at the updates to Advisory Circular 21-32, which were made to support the revised prepositioning policy outlined in FAA Order 8120.22. This advisory circular now provides enhanced guidance that aligns directly with the updated procedures for handling prototype aircraft engines, propellers, and articles prior to design approval. The goal here is to ensure that manufacturers and production approval holders have a clear understanding of how to control and document pre-positioned items. By strengthening the language and aligning it with FAA Order 8120.22, the FAA has created a more unified and enforceable framework for managing these products, reducing ambiguity, and improving compliance across the board. This update reinforces the FAA's broader effort to harmonize policy across orders and advisory circulars, making it easier for stakeholders to navigate requirements with confidence. Next, let's look at the updates to Advisory Circular 43-9, which now plays a more central role in return to service policy. The FAA has officially transferred the return to service policy for aircraft engines, propellers, and articles from FAA Order 8130.21 into Advisory, Circular 43-9. This shift reinforces the Advisory Circular's role as the primary guidance document for maintenance records and FAA Form 8130-3, Return to Service Documentation. Importantly, Flight Standards is now responsible for overseeing return to service policy and guidance. This centralization helps ensure consistency and accountability in how return to service is interpreted and applied. For those seeking clarification or support, the General Aviation Branch, AFS 340, has been designated as the Office of Primary Responsibility for Advisory, Circular 43-9. This provides a direct line to the team managing return to service policy, streamlining communication, and support for industry stakeholders. These changes reflect the FAA's ongoing effort to simplify policy structure, clarify responsibilities, and make guidance more accessible to those who rely on it daily. 
before finalizing these updates, the FAA conducted a comprehensive review process. Internal FAA users, the field, were invited to comment, followed by legal review from the Office of the Chief Counsel. The public also had the opportunity to provide feedback. All comments were carefully reviewed and dispositioned before publishing the final versions of the FAA orders and advisory circulars. This collaborative approach helped ensure the guidance is both practical and aligned with stakeholder needs. For customers in the United States, please contact the FAA field office that serves your geographic area. For manufacturing, contact an Aircraft Certification Service Certification Management section. For airworthiness, contact an Aircraft Certification Service Certificate Management section or a Flight Standards District office. To find your FAA field office, visit www.faa.gov and use the search window to locate an office. If you are located outside of the United States, please contact your country's Civil Aviation Authority for assistance. The FAA offers a range of resources and support offices to assist you through the appropriate channels. In summary, the reorganization of FAA Order 8130.21 was undertaken to streamline guidance, eliminate redundancy, and align related policies across multiple documents. In this briefing, we reviewed the background of the changes, updates to Orders 8130.21, 8120.22, and 8120.18, as well as revisions to Advisory Circulars 21-32 and 43-9. These updates represent a coordinated effort to enhance the clarity and usability of FAA documentation, ensuring it better supports today's operational needs. This concludes the briefing from the Aircraft Certification Services Policy and Standards Division, Production, and Airworthiness section. Thank you for watching.